While driving through Lexington City, Kentucky, chances of stumbling upon some public art pieces are very high. And you'll be surprised, this is the work of a daring Kenyan artist, Matthew Kipto Tarus. You see, Kipto is a sculptor by profession with over 13 years of experience in the world of art. Most of the times the city will commission me or even private, private people will still commission me for those. Art is the soul of the community, especially when, you know, dealing with all these things happening in America or in, around the world. Art, I think, is, is an avenue to get some energy when you, you have to recuperate, rejuvenate yourself, feed your mind, feed your soul. You know, when you go to, to listen to live music, have a sculpture around you, it's beyond the material satisfaction. This is what Kipto has been doing for the past nine years since arriving in the U.S. in 2013. I paint, I do ceramics, I do pots, and I make um, sculpture out of wood, I make mixed media out of metal, out of uh, plastic, computer-generated designs. So I pretty much I double up in a lot of mediums and materials. Kipto's preferred working material is wood. Sometimes when you look at a piece, it really evokes maybe some anger in you. Sometimes you look at a piece, it shows so much joy to you. So all these emotions, it might either be good or bad. What you see is what you get. You don't need to be beautiful, yeah. Some, some artists are known for just making art art, but you know, they still evoke. And they, that's, that's what, you know, uh, the, the human mind is attracted to. Watching Kipto work is not only captivating, but also therapeutic. Seeing the art come alive and his vision manifest is definitely a worthwhile experience. Wow! Beautiful! Kipto says his interest in sculpting started back in 2004 when he joined the University of Nairobi's Architecture, Design and Development Faculty. University of Nairobi, that's where I learned my fundamentals of what art is. You know, I, I took illustration and that's where I started drawing the human form. The human anatomy is the most important uh, aspect of art. And especially if you're a sculptor, you really know how to to get all the muscles, the bone structure, you know, how the skin lays on your, on your body. You really have to get that, to understand that. And that's what I was taught at Nairobi University by uh, yeah. one and only uh, Francisco Odundo. Yes. Sir. yes. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, it's, a, it's one of the most important places to learn in Africa. And I think there's, there's so many things to be done inculcates a lot of practical functionality and when you get out to the industry you you know you just pick it up and go you know so that's what I really like about what Nairobi University imparted in my life. And after graduating in 2008 with a Bachelor of Arts in Design majoring in illustration, Kipto worked in the banking sector for some time. He later started his own graphics design company King Concepts, but his passion was elsewhere. I want to explore some more art, you know, but the thing was sculpture liquid very uh, elusive. My company could take over what I was doing for the bank, and then so I got myself time to actually start practicing art. Okay. Yes. Straight on liquid you apply. You apply to, to universities, you know. And it took some couple of years to actually be accepted, but uh, uh, Batumzuri, University of Kentucky, gave me a scholarship to come in and do sculpture here. What really happened, there's a professor from University of Kentucky, Alikuja Kenya, Nairobi, for his sabbatical, just holiday 
but he came to my Nairobi University just to look at what the art is going on there. And that's when I was introduced by my own professors in Nairobi to him. His name is Gary Bibbs. Mm -hmm. And so Gary Bibbs told me about uh, Manenwe Masters. So upon mm Donikajua, -hmm. where to apply, and you know, he gave me, you know, the directions of how to maneuver it. Yeah, it's not really easy, but you know, especially if it's in the art world, it's a very small world. And uh, you really have to prove to qualify. You, know. you need to compete. Yes, it's very rest. competitive. Mm. It's very competitive. Mm. And, you know, especially in my field of sculpture, it's even more competitive, you know. Most of the schools don't offer just the undergrad for sculpture. Most of the schools will offer masters for sculpture. Mm. And so you have to first get through your undergrad so that you get to the sculpture uh, program. Since arriving in the U.S., Kipto has made great use of the opportunity to relocate here. He's even been able to make a name for himself in the world of art through his business. I have my own studio, I run my own gallery, I have my own outdoor space, and you know, I'm also, I employ people here too. So that's the best thing about you know, being an artist is that you can have help and assistance and still have it be your name. Well, I have assistants in my studio, two, two assistants, and foreman actually, Uncle Mike here is, a, is kind of like the manager foreman. I can only do so much here at the studio, so sometimes you really have to get help. Most of uh, established artists, they employ assistants, you know, you cannot do it by yourself. Everybody loves Kip. Kip is super friendly. He, he's kind of a person, he um, knows everybody's name, he has that knack. You know, for, for people's names that, you know, I can never remember anybody's name, but if you tell Kip your name, he knows who you are. And the next time he sees you, he addresses you by name. And, and he just, whenever he goes in to see people, and I think, Kip, this he's is not going to happen. He's not near in Lexington, Lexington. Everybody, yeah, you know, whenever you go, to, wherever you go, you sit down in a restaurant, somebody comes up and says, Hi, Kip, how you doing? Da, 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 every, I mean, everywhere. <laughs> and <laughs> his art is everywhere. He's and his art is around, yes, and everybody knows about his, when you say Kip, they go, oh, who's Kip? It's, you have somebody who doesn't know him, and then you say, well, this piece of art, and they go, oh, that guy. Another motivating factor for Kipto is the fact that he is not alone. Kenyan artists are making it big here in a land of opportunity. Yes, there's a lot of Kenyans, actually. I mean, from the top contemporary artists that are you know, making, like Wange Shimutu, she's dominated New York and bigger cities, and she's now in Kenya, has a studio in Kenya. There's uh, my friend in Oregon, Washira, yeah. who is also doing a lot of um, mixed media and paintings and music. I can count different states that, you know, Kenyans are around and, and making it happen. This is quite positive for Kipto, who draws most of his inspiration from Kenyan artists. There's a lot of uh, really great artists in, in Kenya who have been inspired. First of all, his name is uh, Billy Kaigua Kagunju, Kopale Kuona Trust. And then Kuna Kota Otieno, Kuna Gomba Otieno. Especially in the Kuona Trust family and uh, also in uh, the Go Down Art Center. For Kipto, coming to America was a good decision. I'm paying all my bills, even send money home. The best thing is that I really like what I'm doing. So within that constraint, money gets to be very, very small of an issue. To me, I'm doing what I like. So that's really, I think it's a blessing to be able to be doing this and getting paid. But this does not mean that the Langata native has closed the chapter on Kenya. No, no, I'm not here to stay. I'm here to continue what has been, I've been doing, you know, because eventually I want to have an outdoor piece too in Kenya, or probably inside city center in Nairobi or Eldoret, Nakuru. There's so much sculpture to be put out there. There's so much to celebrate in Kenya that, you know, just the paintings and uh, the other kinds of art forms will not just satisfy. You know, with sculpture, you know, it's immediate satisfaction when you look at big pieces. Like the one, uh, yeah, Mze Jomo Kenyatta. We need uh, other people too. And as we conclude, 
This is Kipto's plan for the future. We need some other inspiring, bigger sculptures in Nairobi, in East Africa, in the whole of Africa, you know. Some, maybe one day I put up something in South Sudan, you know, or in Angola or in Cameroon, you know, we just because that is what, you know, right now we need to push for that, for outdoor pieces, sculptures that inspire people in the city, in the towns. That is not just here in America or in different places of Europe. People need to see sculpture in Africa, you know, and that's, I think, is, is what I'm getting ready for.